Hey guys, it's Susie, and my setup might be more professional, but I'm still tacky, recording in Dunkin' Donuts tonight. <laughs> in tonight's video, which came directly from a viewer request, and guess what? If you stay till the end, you'll learn how to make a viewer request. Um, it's all about modules, making sure that kids know how to go there, no, making sure that kids know how to, if it's te I can't talk, y'all, it's the Dunkin' Donuts making sure that teachers know how to set prerequisites and requirements that make kids move through in an orderly fashion and just a little bit of training to ensure that they always land at the modules. So y'all, you know I'm in love with modules, so stay tuned and then stay till the end because I'm gonna share with you another opportunity that you have to get in touch with me and I think to find out some cool stuff about me. Okay, thanks, bye. Okay, so let's talk about some module settings that we have not visited at least in great de detail before. I've mentioned them, but y'all, I teach a whole course on modules that sometimes takes like two and a half hours or something, and I condensed it. Give a shout out to my friends in Lafayette, Indiana, because I've given a presentation there that was like an hour a couple times. But anyway, it's a lot to talk about. So if you feel like Susie says modules all the dang time, well, there's plenty to say. I do call it the hidden treasure of, of Canvas. So anyway, I wanna talk about specifically a request that came in from a viewer um, about prerequisites and requirements because we're wanting to make sure, she's wanting to make sure that kids aren't just jumping willy-nilly into whatever assignment or discussion or whatever. Uh, you know, they wanna make sure that kids are going in a certain order. So let's talk about those features. And so if you'll come to the title of a module, and this works best in a course where you have bunches of modules so that you can, you know, sample or demonstrate what I'm looking at right now. You're going to click maybe your second module just to practice and go to the word edit. And this is gonna allow us to edit the title, but also to add things like prerequisites. So I'm gonna to go to prerequisite. And I like to say, I have a, a module that I really feel like every kid should have. It's for free in the commons. You can go grab it and I'll show you what it's called in just a minute. Um, but that module, first of all, I want you to notice it's only letting me pick something that's at the top of my module list called before we modulate. If I want a module to be a prerequisite, I first of all have to drag it to the top of the page or at least not necessarily to the top, but above whatever the current module is. So I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to grab the module that I think should be a prerequisite. It's called Online Learning 101. So you can search for me in the comments, Susie Lolly or Sally Lolly. You can try both ways to find that. And so I'm gonna drag it before the second module because I wanna say, you know, this is gonna be a prerequisite. If a kid comes in in March and they've not been here all year, before they get into the content of my course, I want them to be able to do the, you know, they just need some strategy behind online learning. So again, back to my, what I was doing, I'm going to click the three dots, I'm going to go to edit, and now I'm going to go to add prerequisite, and I should be able to choose that one because it's above this one at the top. So I'm going to choose Online Learning 101, and really I would program that prerequisite on every module if it were me, but I'm not you. In the words of Bobby Brown, guess what? It's your prerogative. You can do what you want to do. And y'all, I did finally tweet him and tell him that I say that statement like in every training. <laughs> he didn't write back, but anyway, I just thought he should know that I'm using his name. The second thing I want to talk about are requirements, and I have visited this in other uh, videos, but I want to show you um, maybe in a module, I've shown you a lot of it in just pretend courses. This is a real course I teach that is, you know, real stuff that I have used with teachers over and over and over again. So for example, this one that I made, it's a sample module with a mastery path. We're not going to get into mastery paths today, but I did make a separate video on that. If you're interested, you can go back and find that one. Um, but anyway, what I wanted to show you is not mastery paths in particular, but just how I can say, listen, I need a checklist for everything I should have done, could have done, need to do. And what it looks like is this. If I go into student view, it gives kids who have not completed a thing this empty bubble. Now, the ones that have nothing there, it's because I've hidden that page or either I've not made a requirement for that page. But for students, they will see a little empty bubble that lets them know, hey, you need to go back and do something to count this as complete in my course. And the something is up to you. So I have a lot of empty bubbles. But this is a way to give your kids a digital, besides the to-do that pops up and it just shows a few items on the right sometimes, this is a way that you can show, you know, exactly what they need to do in a particular module. So I'm going to leave student view. Just I just wanted you to see what I was programming. Okay. And now I'm going to go into a module. I've probably already done it on all these. Let's do this one. Okay. So I'm going to go into a module. I'm going to go to the three dots beside the title again. I'm going to go to edit just like I was. And this time I want to go down here to where it says add requirement. And you have some options here. You can say that students have to complete everything or one of the requirements. If you're just like, this is a free choice kind of a module or something, I'm gonna say all. And then further, you can say whether they have to move through the requirements in sequential order. Like they'll say, no babe, you gotta go back and take the notes. I know that I've heard from lots of teachers 
kids are just skipping ahead and doing assessments when they really need to be doing the notes. So set this setting here that says they must move through in sequential order and that'll fix that issue. And then I come down here, it's gonna show me the first thing in my module, which is how to build a module. And then I decide what counts as complete. Over here, does just viewing the item work? Mark is done or contribute to page. You'll get different options depending on what's in your module. So I'm just gonna say for this one, they have to view it because it's just a page. And then I'm gonna add requirement. And I'm gonna keep on programming. Whoop, not right click though. And then this one, I'm gonna say they have to tell me that they did it, okay? They have to mark it as done. Or if it was a, a teacher-student collaborative page, which I've shown in a previous video, then maybe they have to contribute to the page. You will be able to toggle, or you'll be able to add for every, um, for every element in your module what you want to have as the completion requirement. So that gets them the green check. And then for this last thing, end of module, they just have to view it. That's just a silly thing I put in mind. So I'm gonna update module. You'll notice, because I've had students in this course before, adult students, but it'll say, hey, there are people who've already done this. Do you want to relock it until they complete the new requirements? I won't do that this time. I'm just going to say continue, but you have that option. If you had other things in the module, like I'll just show you one and then hopefully remember to delete it so I don't mess up this course. But if you had an assignment as well, or you know, a discussion or whatever, or a quiz, it gives you different options for programming that one. So when I go into edit, then I can say something like, okay, I'm gonna add a requirement for that assignment I just made. And then this time I'm gonna say either they have to submit it, you're the boss, or they have to score at least a certain score for it to give them a check off. If you believe in mastery learning and you're allowing multiple attempts, then maybe you want them to have to get an 80 or an 85 before they can move on, or just a 70, you know, I've been there. <laughs> Whatever it is, I'm just gonna say submit the assignment. And so what would happen, and again, I'm not gonna relock the module, but you could. In a real course, you would do this before uh, kids had already gotten into it, or you can go back and just say relock or whatever you wanna do. But now when a student goes in to do one of those requirements, so I'm gonna go in as a student, and hopefully remember the module I was just working on. And I know it had three things plus a random assignment. Let me find it, right here. I said they had to go in order. You're gonna notice these are grayed out. So I'm gonna go to this one. And that's another reason, let me go back to that. Let me make sure I'm clear. Another reason they're grayed out is because I've asked them to, uh, remember earlier I said it's because you haven't made a requirement for that one, but another reason could be you've asked them to go um, in order. And so they have to do this one first. So getting back to that. This one, I just said they had to view the page, yay. This one, I think I said they had to mark as done. So they had to check out something and then mark it as done. I'm gonna go back to home. And now if I refreshed, and I go down to that module. I may not even have had to refresh. I was looking at the wrong part of my page. You know, it's that time of day. So now I have two check marks, but it's telling me, hey, you're still incomplete. Okay, you've started it, but it's incomplete. And then I would get my other check marks when I get to them. So those are prerequisites and requirements. I hope that clarified what those can do for you. So I'm gonna leave student view because I wanna make sure that you have done a couple things that will ensure that your kids go to the modules and navigate that way. I know there's a to-do bar that pops up on the side. I know there's a calendar and I did a whole video on you want everything to be on the calendar. But if you want kids to be able to navigate through their modules without missing anything, making sure they go in order, the first part of that is just training. Like you've gotta have a big obvious button that says modules or says assignments and they click that every day and it takes them to the same kind of page. They know, oh, this is familiar. I do it all the time. You know I come a lot from a Canvas for Littles lens, but this is just a Canvas for usability lens. Anybody that you want to do things the way you want them to do them, you have to make it easy and a habit. Pavlov's dogs here, okay? So we've got a part of it's just training them. This is where they start every day. Even if you have a homepage, which most, I know most elementary teachers do, but certainly a lot of other teachers do too. My son's in high school and they all have a homepage. But you need it to be really obvious that anytime they want to do work, they come to where it says modules. So you just, part of that's training. The second part is making sure that modules are what's accessible. So you know how I am about that. In my student view of this course, which is a real course, a, a lot of times I show you guys a pretend course, but in this real course, you'll notice my students who are adults only have home and modules. I wanna make it very clear where they're supposed to go. If you wanna make sure that you've simplified your sidebar just like that, I have a whole video on that, but let me give you a quick tip for making sure modules is showing, which is the opposite of what I show in that video. As a teacher, you're gonna go into settings, you're gonna to go to the third tab navigation, 
and you're going to make sure modules is in the top section where it says drag and drop items to reorder them. And then you will go down to the bottom and click save. Again, if you want to know how to simplify your whole sidebar, I've got a whole video about that. Go watch it. So I know what you're thinking to yourself, Susie, I'm still stuck on you saying that I could be a viewer who makes a request and you make a video. Well, you can be. <laughs> if you go to suzylolly.com slash subscribe, you can join my newsletter. I'm Y'all, I'm going to try to be better about sending them once a week. Maybe on Saturdays, you guys can let me know in the comments if you think Saturday's a good time or just tell me, nope, I hate that time. Now, I, I send them on Saturdays in the morning. That's my most productive time. My husband's watching the baby. And so anyway, the last one that came out, I actually shared like kind of a lot of personal information, but I think people really liked it because I kept getting emails back from it. So you can not only email from me from there, but you can just get news in your inbox. So I would love if you would subscribe. And if you missed out on the one I sent this week, then guess what? Just for you, well, really for everybody. When you get the next one, which is the goal is to send it this Saturday, you're going to see a little button that says past issues if you view it in your browser. And then you can go get nosy on anything else I've ever said, like random stuff from two years ago. <laughs> so just want to let you know, I have had several requests from viewers for videos. I also see those on the YouTube comments. And y'all, I'm a, a mother of two. It's a crazy time of my life. And so I don't always get the videos made as fast as I could, but I am working on them. The ones that I feel equipped to provide, they'll be in the line. Okay. Thanks guys for always doing that. Hey guys, I put my heart into these videos, so I hope you loved it. I hope you've loved all of them, but if you haven't, then make sure you go back and watch the previous videos. I'm making playlists for you all the time. So if you're somebody who wants time savers, there's a playlist for that. If you want to gamify, playlist for that and all of my themes of my blog. So did you like it? Go ahead and click the thumb below. If you really liked it, I'd love if you shared it on your favorite social media channel. I'm at Suzy Lolly on Twitter. And then finally, my very favorite is if you subscribe. Subscribe to YouTube and subscribe on the blog. Take care.